Okay, welcome back, Douglas Garage. A little how-to I'm going to inject in between all the project stuff. T minus two days to tow in the trailer. Can't wait. But this particular question has come up three or four times and I want to address it. It's another one of my favourite subjects. It's workshop practices. I've said this many times, workshop practices. The ability to get round a problem by using common sense and practical means. That's what makes a good mechanic. Not a row of certificates on the wall. Your man who's got a row of certificates on the wall, he's a clever man, he's been to college, but he needs those other skills as well. You can't just go to college, get a diploma, be a mechanic. Part of getting over a job, getting around a problem, thinking practically, thinking outside the box, and I hate that phrase, I really do, but it, it, is, it is apt in this point. So, this particular question has come up several times, and I'm going to answer it now. I don't always do videos on demand, I get asked all the time, but this particular one, I think will help you out. And it's about bolts and nuts that have been rung off. And I had an email, the last one of three or four recently that's actually prompted me to do this is from Mr. Christian Hack. That's his username. So, Christian, what you did was ask a question. You bought a bike and you said that it's got several fasteners on it that have been rounded off or rung off, as I kind of generally call it. And in your opinion, you were saying that that's because the last owner was a monkey and been swinging on it. Possibly but more likely they've been using the wrong tools. You see, we always think that if a nut's been rung off or stripped, it's ham-fistedness. It is because they've used the wrong tool and not realized, but sometimes people haven't got a comprehensive toolkit. Come on in, I want to show you something. When I say the wrong tool, come in, Ben. What it's about, <laughs> right, it's fell over. Mine a trailer. Um, this, um, this one here is a 14 mil nut. And that is the fit of a 14 mil spanner or wrench. And when you put, that's the fit you want, nice and solid. But what people will do, they'll reach for that. Now that's a 9 16 and look, it fits, but it moves. You see how that fits on, but there's movement. You can even, on a 14 mil nut, you can get a 15 mil spanner and look, you can use it. So what happens is people will get a spanner in their hand, they'll put it on the fastener. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. Cut. People will get a spanner, they'll put it on the fastener and it'll fit, kind of. It'll wobble a bit, so I'll give it some. And they'll lean on it, and, oh it's gone, that's great, I've got the nut, I'm done. And then they realise they haven't. What they've done is, the six sides on the nut, they just bruised them in and then burn it over. So I'm gonna do that on this nut now and show you how you can burr a nut real easy and then how to undo it once it's been rung off. So stick around, stay tuned, I'll show you what not to do and if you do, or someone else has done it, how to get out of it in two easy stages. All right, I'm using the 14 mil to hold the nut solid and that's to represent it being bolted up tight in the job and we're gonna use a 15 Open ender. This is what not to do. Try to undo it and it slips round. So they go, oh, I'll go on that one. And it slips round. And it slips round again. And then I'll put the ring on. Now that will get it. And it slips round. And before you know it, when you look closely, hang on, it's not even going to want to come off because we've burned it so much. Right. And take a look at this fastener. What we've done is, the fact that this is too big, it's slipped over the edges and bruised these edges in. And it's rounded it off. Now that's not bad. That by no means is the end of the world. What is the easiest way to deal with that, if you've just done that to a nut, before you worry, try and fit. As you saw, I couldn't get the 14 mil that was there holding it still for the purposes of the demonstration. Couldn't get it off because the burrs have actually stopped it. So you try and put a 14 on that now, it doesn't really want to go. And that's when people get worse and worse and worse. They'll try and get it on and they'll, and they'll give it some more welly and they'll just wring it off more and more. So when you do that, stop. Stop. Don't go any further. Get a file. And then just file out the burrs. All right, okay, let's remember, that's on your bike somewhere. So that might be a wheel nut. It might be sticking out your engine casing, whatever. So just to hold that in there, for the purposes of the exercise, just on the flats, 
if you can get to them, this is the main point. Get round the nut and file it back into shape. Now, okay, the bits, the actual corners you've bruised, you won't unbruise them. You can't, you can't restore it perfect. But if you take the burrs off, that helps you then to fit the correct size spanner or, or wrench back on and you can do the job. But we're going to presume, again for the purposes of the exercise, that you've done a proper job of completely screwing it up or someone else has. I'm going to put that on the bottom I'm going to hold it still. It doesn't move anywhere because this is just a demo piece. And once that's held nice and still, I'm going to get in there, do that 15. I'm going to truly bugger it up. Alright, now we've truly beasted that to death. All the corners are buggered up on that and it's started to chew quite badly. So the first thing at this point that most people will do is make the cardinal sin of reaching for the grips. Truly, and I can't stress this enough, that is the worst possible thing you can do. It really is. I want to show you something. This is a spare nut, which I'm just going to use for demonstration purposes. Everybody reaches for the grips when they can't get a spanner on a bolt. So you reach for the grips and you clamp them around it and you try and undo it. Now, you sort of get surprised why when you do that, the nut itself doesn't move and it just chews it even more. And you clamp it on for England like that. And then you've ovaled it. You probably can't see it, but now that won't go on. It won't go on there at all. Now, when you clamp it down, think about this. Think clamping it down will squash the nut onto the thread, won't it? So why do we put grips on it? I've seen when I worked in the bike shop, I saw mechanics using things like this and hanging on them and bolting like bungee and mechanic like junior mechanics on the bottom and swinging from them to try and get bolts undone. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, what are you doing, monkey boy? All you're doing is you're pinching that nut tighter onto the thread. I'm glad I don't do surgery. <laughs> so that's going to make the problem worse. So you need a method of turning that nut without gripping it. And that sounds impossible, but it's not. There is a way to do it. And that is what I'm going to show you now. So stick around, stay tuned. Here's how you get a rung nut or bolt head off. Okay. That little dot there is just for your benefit so you can see we're going to get this to move. Now that is tight as you like. As you like. Because we have just rung it off by doing it up. And the 14mm won't go on it. We're going to assume it's even worse rounded than that. It's all bitten and chewed and some idiots had the grips on it. I truly mean it. You can't, I can't say it enough. That is the stupidest thing to do. Use okay, that's all ready to go. Now, the tool of choice, the weapon of choice is a centre punch. A decent quality centre punch. Get it on a grinder and give it a decent point. Get it sharp. It doesn't want to be rounded and dull. It needs to be a good sharp point that you can feel is good and sharp, like the end of a compass. And a toffee hammer. Toffee hammer, nothing heavier. Don't go using a big hammer, tell you why in a minute. Now the technique is to get into the bolt itself. We'll go in there. And initially, to make yourself a, to make yourself a little dent wherever you might go, if, even if that's completely round, even if it's as round as that, it doesn't matter. The first thing to do is face it straight down through the shaft and get yourself half a dozen little hits. And once you've got a little purchase, bring, don't have to get too close, once you've got a purchase, bring the angle across. So move the angle of it across so that now the centre punch is going past. It's going to be forcing the nut anti-clockwise, counterclockwise. And then gradually come round. You'll see, gradually, there you go. come undone. Now you'll peel it out like that every now and again, you'll chew bits of metal out, but this fastener's going in the bin anyway. So get back in straight, make a little dint again, and keep coming. And as you can see, chasing it out 
quite nicely. So you've got about a quarter of a turn on that. Now at this point, don't be tempted to get the grips, clump it on and go because the grips will just squeeze it back onto the thread and that will be back to gripped again. It will be back to seized. So keep going with the centre punch, come back to where you can. Wherever you can get access, get another point, there you go, and just centre punch it off. Okay, if it's a big nut, like one of them, or a wheel nut, use a chisel because that will get a better grip. You may want to use the centre punch to start with, if once you get yourself a little space to put it in, use the chisel. So two good tools to buy is a decent quality centre punch and a decent quality chisel, a little 10 mil one, that's all you need, and get them on the grinder, that one needs a, that one needs a sharpen up. But get them on the grinder like that, get them nice and sharp, doesn't do them any harm, in fact they work better. Now there's a very important point as well, when you're chiselling or uh, centre punching a nut or a screw or a bolt off, don't forever, for any reason, use a big hammer. The reason is that the, the job requires small, continued, light impacts. Because you only want the energy focused in that point going into the nut and turning the nut. You don't want to use a big hammer where all the massive amount of energy that you're going to belt into that is going to go through the bolt into the engine or into whatever else is bolted. Remember, this could be a casing nut. And what your casing is made from? 6mm thick cast alloy. You're just going to crack the casings. So don't go beating it with a heavy hammer. This is a light tappy job. Not a big heavy beating job. Little tiny hammer, little and often, tap it in, centre punch. And I'll tell you where it works the most. On your Harley Davidson Derby cover or clutch inspection cover, you see those little Torx head screws that have got a chamfered dome head. You put a Torx head in, you mince them out for a pastime. They're really good at it. They get a bit seized and they overcome the ability for a tool to get them. Again, very easy. Get the centre punch in the casing, tap it in, turn it so it's anti-clockwise and then just chase that nut round that's how you get them off now if that doesn't work and there's no way it will come off and it's absolutely seized remember it may be seized this may have only rounded not because you use the wrong tool but because physically the nut might be welded on then you've got no way of getting it off other than proper destruction so you simply get a drill bit in the end of the bolt here and you drill into the end of the bolt and you drill the bolt out. So go in at 3mm, come out to 6mm, then come out to 8mm, drill that bolt up to here and then that nut will just fall off.